Hey, what's up YouTube? This is going to be my eight month kit build update. So I'm going to walk you through everything I've done so far and also explain some of the things that we've got coming up, some of the things that I'm working on right now uh, to change the car into a full blown kit replica. So the first thing is, you'll remember I bought this car back in March this year. So we're currently in November 22. I bought this in March 2022 this year so I've had it for about eight months now I feel like I've done a fair bit in that time there's obviously only so much you can do unless you just literally throw a ton of money at the car and get everyone else to do work on it that's not something I really want to do so I'm gonna have to do or I do and I did on my last kit build is I'm gonna have to do obviously some of the work there are some parts that I do outsource uh, but there's also going to be lots of work on the car that I'm going to do myself. So, yeah, eight months I've had it now, and we are making progress. We are we are getting there slowly. So you will notice that uh, when I bought the car back in March, I had no turbo hood. I had a fiberglass vent to put on it. I've still got that. It's out in my garage, but I don't know what to do. I am trying to get hold of a factory steel turbo hood but it's very very hard here in the UK they never ha hardly come up and if they do they're very very expensive so I'm gonna see what comes up I've got a few options left so let's just see how it goes you will notice as well that I've got 15 inch wheels on this car I'm so pleased that I've got 15s on this although these are just caps they're not actual real 15 inch turbo cast wheels but I am going to get some that, but that's probably going to be the last thing I buy because it's going to set me back around about £2,000 so it's going to be a lot of money but uh, I think these 15 inch wheels make so much so much difference another thing uh, is the tailpipes I will cover more I will talk about, uh, about the tailpipes a little bit more as we go uh, so moving on, uh, there's the tailpipes there. But the first thing that I did when I got the car, if you remember, I went inside and pretty much just ripped out the entire interior of the car, like all the all the carpets, the seats. I took some of the seat belts out, and all of the rear hatch stuff. Uh, uh, sorry, all of the stuff in the back, in the boot space. And you will see here as well. You will notice that the actual fuel pump had a cover which was on it uh, and that wasn't actually in place when I took the carpet out that was loose that was up, that was kind of on there but it wasn't completely fixed and it did say that the fuel pumps was changed about two years ago anyway I've had a few issues to do with the fuel pump nothing major just had to do a little bit of work to it over the last few months there was a few uh, things that we had to change these these pipes weren't quite connected uh, properly uh, and also we had to take take the top of the fuel pump out and we had to clean up the li uh, the actual cap uh, it wasn't it didn't quite secure in place properly so uh, so yeah we had a few things to do with the fuel pump but that is all working now it's all been put back in place we've got a cover back on that and uh, and I've sealed everything up so that's all good but yeah you will see that the whole of the interior of the car the carpet is all out and that was one of the first things I done because I didn't want to mess around I thought uh, if I'm going to be uh, if I'm going to be working on the car I just want to get the carpet out so the whole car can breathe for quite a few months and just let it air and I'm pleased I did that because it's one big job that I don't have to do further down the road and not only that it's so much easier when you want to rewire the car and doing everything else it's so much easier to do it when you've got nothing on the floor so you can see what you're actually dealing with and that was definitely a good idea that was that was the first thing that I did and if you if you do anything like this I suggest you do the same obviously if the carpet's in good condition then it's a little bit more difficult but mine was obviously the wrong color it was gray so it, it had to come out anyway so moving on so after we ripped out the interior and all the headliner I then took it into a garage because I needed to change the exhaust. Now I had two big tailpipes coming out the back of the car. Now 
for starters these needed to be trimmed at such an angle so all of the fumes were going down not only that but they were sticking out the back of the car too much now as far as I know most of the episodes most of the kit episodes I've watched uh, his tailpipes uh, you couldn't really see them very easily from the back of the car now there may be the odd episodes here and there where you could see them but not only that I think it looks so much nicer when you can't see the tailpipes now I know some people build a rep you know these kits and they have a twin tailpipe coming out of the back you know one either side like this and it's personal preference but me personally um, I didn't want these to be on show obviously he's not um, he's not supposed to be uh, running a conventional engine anyway in the TV show is he it's, it's supposed to be like a turbine sort of like futuristic um, propulsion system you know in the car so obviously carve the future so these exhaust pipes I just wanted to be I wanted them to go under the car so you couldn't see them and also be trimmed so that the fumes were going down so that's what I'd done and and they done that in the garage when they worked on the exhaust now the other thing I needed them to do while it was in there is to change part of the actual exhaust system so there you go look you can see where they where they've trimmed it back and I thought they done quite a good job it was pretty good to be honest it was uh, I mean it wasn't that difficult but you you obviously don't get many many goes at it you know you just get one or two goes at it um, and uh, if you cut it wrong then obviously you're not going to have you're not going to be able to go back and sort of rectify much so anyway moving on so this is the new stainless steel exhaust that they put on this section here obviously goes to my engine and from there from that section there up all the way back is brand new I don't have a cat on this particular exhaust and I think that's the re reason why it's a bit fumey I might even have a cat put on this exhaust I don't know yet I'm gonna to have to speak to him because I've got to go back into the garage uh, and have some modifications done on the exhaust again the reason is because when we dropped the engine when well when we took the engine out and we've we've done all the work to the engine when we put it back in somehow it is moved and the whole exhaust now sits closer to the car unfortunately that's just one of them things when he when he actually fitted the uh, exhaust it was really good it was there was a good healthy gap between the exhaust pipe and the bottom of the car but as I said because we've taken the engine out it's, un it's unfortunate I think the reason is because we've got new engine mounts and uh, in the engine bay and the engine now sits higher up which is unfortunately now pulled the exhaust system slightly higher the exhaust pipe uh, so that's just one of them things can't be helped but I've got to go back there pretty soon and he's going to modify this for me and I might even ask him to fit a cat for me as well I don't know I'm gonna to have to chat to him and just see what we can work out you know moving on so the next thing after I had done the exhaust so uh, the exhaust was obviously the second sort of thing that I did that cost me a few hundred pounds I think about 400 pounds to do that and then I ordered loads of parts because I wanted to do the engine bay these are a lot of the parts that I ordered I think all these parts here probably came to about eight or nine hundred pounds I did spend more than that though in parts because there were lots of other bits and pieces I needed along the way so moving on uh, so yeah here's the car on the ramp so this was about I think it went in on the 4th of July so this is this is the 4th of July this year it went in this is the first day it was in there I think this is when I actually left the car there they had it for about two months yeah so they pulled everything apart this is the engine before we did any work to it so as you can see uh, it's all red underneath yeah the actual bodywork is red so I'm I'm guessing the actual color of the car from factory was obviously red because the whole engine bay is red. Uh, either that, or when they did a full respray, they they pulled the engine out and sprayed the engine bay red. Um, I don't think they did. Uh, I think this was the first time the engine ever came out of this car. But anyway, doesn't make too much difference. It's done now. So that was the state of it when I put the car in the garage. 
and then they uh, another little angle there from the side so you can see that it's all red here obviously being a kit replica I can't leave the engine bay like this all red it's just going to look absolutely awful and this was one thing that I wanted to do on this car different to my last kit that I built is I wanted to make the engine bay look really good so moving on another angle for the engine so you can see it's quite dusty yeah quite dirty it's, you know muck everywhere it was pointless trying to give it a clean it was just not worth it so I thought you know what I'll wait and then I'll put it in the garage and then once once it goes in there they can give it a really good clean and everything so this is what happened when they were when the car was in the garage they pulled the engine out and that was the result so a bit of a mess and this was after the engine bay got sprayed still looks a bit grubby in the middle there but a lot of this has yet to be changed yeah it's been changed now because the whole conversion has been done the whole engine engine change has been done uh, but at this particular time the engine bay got sprayed black yeah only up to the side of the wings all of this section here needs to be done when I do the rest of the car and then that was the engine when it was out so a brand new timing chain yeah and a, and the timing cover was the same they just cleaned it up and I and I asked them to paint it gold as well like the rocker covers and like the top of the engine you'll see on some of the next pictures so this is the the timing chain so yeah all done brand new chain and spigots and everything so really happy about that it's lucky <laughs> I don't know if I actually said this in a in fact I don't think I did but it's lucky that I did change this timing chain because when they took this off the chain was actually cracked in one there was a, there was a there was a bit of a crack in the chain so it was very it was a very good idea um, you know to actually change this because at some point in the future this could have just completely snapped and caused a big mess so I was definitely uh, I definitely made a good de uh, decision changing the, the timing chain but because the engine was out anyway that was pretty much why I did everything that I did because the engine was out and if you're going to change anything that is the time to do it as you can see they painted all of the the block as well yeah the rocker covers all got painted gold and a lot of the hoses got cleaned down so next one and that's another picture so the top the top is all now gold so yeah it's coming along now and that's the engine back in the car um, I'm sure you've probably seen previous videos uh, of it but yeah really happy with how this has come out as I said it will look so much nicer once I spray the entire car and all of this is black yeah gloss black if you can imagine this is this good this is going to look absolutely beautiful once it's done the front tray here the front tray uh, which goes just over the nose yeah this is all going to be gloss black so everything you see is going to be a nice shiny gloss black all the side of the wings yeah all the inside of the wings rather obviously the hood uh, the uh, these are all the the mounts yeah the actual supports for the hood these are all going to be black so it's all going to look lovely once the whole front is black it's all going to blend in and look absolutely lovely just wait and see and that's another picture a little bit further back so moving on so once I got the car back which was I think it was July I put it in in July they had it for two months so August I got it back on about the 10th of September so just uh, over two months and when I got it back um, I fitted the a brand new clear glass rear hatch so this is one that I managed to find on eBay now these are really hard to find some people you know any of you guys in the US probably don't think this is that much of a big deal because you you probably get hold of them a lot easier than what we do here uh, so 
being able to get hold of a clear glass rear hatch here in the UK is, you know, was a, a really big deal. And I've been looking around for about three years and I've not been able to find hardly any. So this is the one that came off the car. Obviously it had heater lines and my last car had heater lines. I did want a clear glass rear hatch for my last kit, but I just couldn't find one. It was so difficult. Not only that, it's got this big ugly rear brake light here as well, so I wanted to get rid of that. So I thought, you know what, rather than mess around with this particular rear hatch and just try and get rid of this and just accept that I've got heater lines, I thought, no, this particular build, I'm going to go all out and I'm going to get a clear glass version, a clear glass one. And that's what I did. This came up on eBay, found it, I think it was about £175. With a bit of postage, it worked out about £185, £200, something like that. But you will see in a previous video I made, I had a lot of manual labor. It took me a long time to actually get this rear hatch ready and actually prepped. It was a bit of a nightmare, to be honest. I think in hindsight, if I ever did this again, I wouldn't buy one with a spoiler already on it. And that's the reason why it took me so much work. Because when these certain spoilers um, I think this this might have been off a of formula. I can't remember, but anyway, cer certain models of the Firebirds and the, they come with a particular spoiler, and when you get them, they're they're kind of like stuck to the stuck to the rear hatch on these little bracket things, and these bracket things are kind of spot welded to the actual rear hatch along the sides and it's a nightmare. I will never do it again. I had to get my grinder out. It spent me, uh, it took me hours, as you saw in the video. If you haven't, you can watch that video and see how I did it, but oh God, it took me ages. Anyway, moving on. So yeah, rear hatch, really happy with that. That's one of the best things that I've managed to find this year for kit parts. So moving on, you can see here, look, I was doing some work. I think this must have been, uh, I don't know, August, September. I may have actually changed this before it went in for the engine bay transformation for the engine bay um, work I can't quite remember but anyway that's another job I did but it's done now it looks really good all I've got left to do on it now um, or if we just go back to the previous um, slides all I've got left to do on the rear hatch now is put my spoiler on on the car because this is obviously my old rear hatch yeah the spoiler is currently off my car at the moment so uh, I've got to put that on. I've just got to uh, drill a few new holes and put that on. It's not a big job. It will go on very soon. All right, moving on then. So you will notice here, this is obviously my old kit yeah, in my garage. Now, the reason why I got this picture up is because my scanner is on order. I decided to buy an LED scanner this time, the same as my last one. The reason is because when I go to car shows, it's not going to draw too much power. Yeah, being LED. Not only that, but it's not going to get very hot either. My on my last kit, the the scanner, the the LED scanner, I used to leave it on for hours. I think one car show I left it on for about seven or eight hours. So it's a really good scanner, absolutely brilliant. Uh, that is from uh, Night Scanners. That's a Night Scanner scanner <laughs> uh, from America. Not cheap, however. You know, you generally get what you pay for, and I'm spending a lot of money on the car, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to go and buy a decent scanner. I'm not saying that the other scanners out on the market are no good. I personally just prefer this one. Um, I will say, though, that also in my opinion, I would say that the night scanner scanners are probably one of the best ones out there. They're all handmade to order and the customer service is very very good and they test them they put them through a, a rigorous test before they send them out to their customers i think they do something like they leave them on for something like um like so many so many hours or so many tens or even hundreds of hours and just leave them on i think just to give them a good test and sort of do all these different tests to them uh, you'll have to speak to them if you so basically if you're interested in a scanner a night scanner scanner is definitely a good one. Uh, the company is called Night Scanners, so a night scanner scanner. So that's on order. One thing that they are going to do different this time, and again, you live and learn. This is now my second kit build, and I've learned a lot 
from doing my last one what I'm going to do with this one is I've asked them to actually paint it black the actual casing where the scanner goes in yeah they're going to paint it black because what I used to get is when it used to sit in the front of my car from a distance in the daylight you could see little bits of chrome yeah which obviously wasn't ideal I wanted everything to just blend in you know really nicely so it was all nice and sleek all nice and black and then you've just got the nice scanner uh, that you can easily see so I asked them if they can paint it black and they said yes they'll do it so hopefully when it comes back it all looks nice and you know uh, nice and uh, glossy black I don't know what sort of black they're going to paint it but whatever it's going to blend in much much nicer than if it was a chrome color yeah so that's just like a little sort of change I've done my fog lights are very similar to what I had on my last build as well the only difference is I've got my indicators I've got like a little indicator uh, section at either end on my current build but apart from that it's pretty much similar uh, moving on to the last uh, picture now here this is again my old interior for my last kit replica I'm gonna make it I'm gonna do it very very similar to this one obviously I don't have a t-bar so I'm not gonna have glass in the top here but I will may I will maybe make some modifications so I've got some perspex sort of uh, material up there so like when you sit there and you look up it will still reflect and so I'm gonna have some some black or some very dark perspex um, I don't know yet I, I've not obviously got that far I'm still quite a, quite away from that point so I've got some ideas uh, I'm gonna have a good think about it maybe after Christmas what I want to do with that but I need to get the whole car sprayed first and then I can start to decide what I'm going to do uh, on the inside so this was my old dashboard it worked fine but this time I'm gonna go with a brand new dashboard brand new TV screens brand new dashboard these TVs were uh, I believe in my last car they ran off my inverter I had a 12 volt leisure battery in the boot and these ran off an inverter not the most efficient ways of doing things I know but that was the system I had in place it worked fine but it wasn't ideal so this time I'm going to have 12 volt TVs that will be operated from a switch on my lower console the whole rest of the dashboard will be brand new it's not going to be gloss black it's going to be matte black because of the reflection I used to get a lot of reflections from this da this dashboard whenever it was sunny so again you live and learn don't you the gull wing is going to look very similar but except uh, this time it's going to be a matte black not a gloss black like you can see here and one thing I will have as an extra is the switch pods so I'm gonna have more more buttons either side of my gullwing steering wheel yeah so obviously turbo boost and stuff like that just like you've seen in one of my previous videos that I made of the dashboard that I'm gonna use in the car so I'll have my upper console which is actually going to be a little bit different to what this one is what I may do again I've not made up my mind yet but I'm going to probably have um, a slightly different upper console I will talk about uh, about that nearer the time I'll go into more detail about that and why I've decided to change my upper console uh, this one looks good but there's a couple of other reasons why I wanted to change it I'm not going to cover that right now so I'm going to use a different upper console lower console absolutely brilliant there is a slightly more modified lower console that I can buy where I can uh, where I can use all these buttons and they actually you can actually uh, use these buttons for different uh, like to actually play music you can connect these to actual songs and different phrases so there is a slightly more modified slightly more advanced lower console on the market now and I'm probably going to get that definitely going to get another uh, Atari joystick that's a really good kind of little extra in the car same door panels same seat same material I can't get hold of the mats anymore but I will get them from somewhere different I've got some ideas for them 
so, uh, so so what else have we got yeah and the center console I've got the center console up in my garage if you remember and I'm going to change the front windscreen as well on this when it goes in for a full respray so if we just go back to the start um, so here we go so the stage we're at, at the moment is the whole engine bay has been done yeah all of the interior has been ripped out I've got a good new clear glass rear hatch uh, lots of stuff on the engine has been changed uh, some of it got changed before I bought the car and that was done by the previous owner by a friend of mine and the the car was running quite well when I bought it but obviously I wanted to take the engine out to spray the entire engine bay so I then just upgraded lots more bit, bits at the same time so the engine is pretty much brand new yeah it's not actually been pulled apart it's not had new internals you know it's not actually been pulled apart in that respect but just about everything else um, has been has been sort of replaced and uh, and it's running really well it's in the garage at the moment just having like a couple more bits done to it but the actual engine and everything is is running lovely it drives really well so the stage we're at, at the moment is I'm now going to work on the interior electrics I need to rerun all the wires and this is unfortunately going to take me a couple of months because there's a lot of work involved I, I I have also found someone to actually spray the car I'm not going to be able to get it sprayed until at least the new year so at least 2023 but I'm hoping that I can get it in about mid January time and then have it in there for a couple of months this is kind of like the timeline that I'm going to work to because I want to try and finish the car by the 1st of July next year now if I don't finish it on the 1st of July I don't finish it but if you if you saw my last build you will know that once it's been once the bodywork is done I I can then crack on with the interior stuff the interior Knight Rider electronics and all of the interior upholstery I can do all of that quite quickly as you saw in my last build so that's the date we've got 1st of July I don't know if we're going to be able to get it finished by that date I'm going to try my hardest but a lot of it will depend on when it goes in for a full respray because I'm now doing the interior electrics I need to run all different all the wires I need to check everything make sure everything is secure everything is safe everything is fused and run lots of new wires everywhere and then also install a leisure battery and all that all that sort of stuff but the actual exterior of the car is pretty much ready to be to be resprayed but it's no good me putting it in for a full respray before all of the electronics are done inside all the wires and that have ran everywhere because if it's if I've had a nice brand new respray I don't want to be climbing around inside the car when I've got a brand new paint when I've got brand new paint um, on the outside it's just not worth it because if I end up marking it uh, then I'm not going to be happy so that's the reason why I'm doing this now and I've got to wait uh, until uh, until the new year to to paint everything and then once the new year comes I think a couple of months to get it resprayed and then once I do that and all the interior electrics are done and ready I can then get it back from the paint shop and then I can start doing all of the interior so I can get I can buy the carpet I can get my PMD seat material I can do the center console get all of my kit electronics ordered yeah and get them all built door panels so I'm hoping from about from about March next year March 2023 I can really start to make some good progress but over the next two to three months it's just going to be a case of you know being a bit patient get all the interior electrics done and then uh, and then in the new year try to get it in try to get it in for a full respray for paint so that is the plan so that's an eight that's the eight month update I've tried to do as much as I can in this time I've tried to give you lots of updates along the way hopefully you've enjoyed the progress and you've enjoyed everything I've, I've showed you 
<clears throat> if you do want to do this yourself and you want to build a kit or you want to build just maybe a Trans Am, um, you know, a Firebird or Trans Am, and you want to and you want to kind of follow along and do things in a similar way to I've done that I've done it in my videos, you know, by all means you can obviously copy everything I've done and uh, and use my videos as a little bit of help. Uh, if you are going to build a full-blown kit and and this is something that you want to do my biggest advice is do everything try try to build a good foundation with the car first because I see so many people get these cars you know within a matter of weeks they start they start fitting all of their carpets and seats and just they kind of try and rush it yeah what I've learned from my first one is that you really do want to focus on the foundation of the build a lot more so that you've got a good engine yeah all of the engines working lovely yeah get everything sprayed all the engine bay done ready get all of your wiring ran uh, and get all of the underneath of the car looking good exhaust you know all of that sort of stuff once you've done all of that you've then got a good solid foundation to work from and then you can do everything on top of that because if you have any issues once your car is converted to a full-blown kit it's not going to be very ideal if it goes back into a garage because you're going to have to get inside and start pulling the carpets up maybe and, and changing things around so this is why I'm being so even more anal this time than I was in my last build because I've kind of learned so much and I'm trying to be a lot more efficient but I'm also trying to be a lot more organized with how I do everything this time so hopefully yeah if you follow along and you like uh, and you like uh, the videos that I put out um, yeah hope hopefully you can you can pick up a few tips as I said this is my second kit build I've, I learned so much from my first one <clears throat> and I'm trying to now uh, make improvements on this one well, I couldn't on my first one because of various things, you know, like time frames and things like that. So anyway, that's it. So hope you enjoyed the video. Eight month update. Hope you enjoyed it. Lots more videos coming up. I've got lots of little videos that I'll that I will make along the way, especially over the next couple of months. So uh, it won't just be a case of there'll be a video coming up, you know, in another six weeks time once the interior electronics are finished. I've got lots of little bits and pieces that, that I've got planned as well. So, yeah, so follow along. Um, make sure you're subscribed uh, so you can get updates every time I upload new videos. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, hopefully I will see you again soon uh, in another kit video. <laughs>